Hello, everybody, and welcome to a Halloween special from the Vault episode. This is Underrated Creepy Pokemon, a podcast I recorded with Swift about a few months ago. It was supposed to go up on his channel, but for some reason, it didn't really work out that way. So there will be a lot of references in this to it being on Swift's channel. So please enjoy Underrated Creepy Pokemon. I'm uploading this as a Halloween special, and please go to Swift's channel. What's up, my flock of feathers? I'm the Swift Swallow, but y'all can call me Swift. And today, as you can see, we aren't alone. Go ahead and introduce yourself, my friend. Hello, everybody. I'm Pat the OST, also known as Pat the Breeder from the Pat's Place channel and the Floor Store channel and the TPD Network, which I have signed Swift to come hang out on. Hello. And we are doing... And that ends the part that we practiced. <laughs> uh, what did you think of my intro thingy? It's good. Um, it's good. You, uh, you do a very good job with um, devoting your entire YouTube existence to copying successful YouTubers. Not really. Hey, no, <laughs> no, but you, no, you have the, you have that kind of enthusiastic thing, but without being, you know, sounding like you're on coke. Yeah. Hey, what's <laughs> it's like some yeah. people do it. Yeah. Um, because it is. 1034 and I've stayed up I've stayed up till 3 or 4 a.m. for the past four weeks <laughs> roughly oops ever since I made that first Skype call with you and we did the mega discussion yeah oops <laughs> so yeah if you're one of the people that likes Swift but doesn't know who I am uh, Swift and I do videos on the Fuller Store channel Pokemon stuff tons of stuff from swift it'd be insane for you not to subscribe to both channels if you like swift yeah really though and if you like me subscribe to this channel because hopefully i'll be hanging out swift more often subscribe to four store subscribe to pat plays and generally you know the entire tpt network would be a good place to stop because eventually laura is going to start uploading her own videos and doing reviews of movies manga spin-off games anime which I'll probably be helping her with because... Yeah, because there's a brand new series on the Floor Store channel called the Pokemon Channel where it's all about the Pokemon anime and the movies. And, and uh, we, will soon I... have, soon, we will soon have uploaded, uh, maybe already by the time this goes up, uh, a podcast with Laura talking about the, um, the very elusive movie, the um, Master of Mirage Pokemon, Mastermind of Mirage Pokemon. Which is something I like, which a lot of people don't, because they don't like the story that they're going with and the attitude of it. But today, I don't know if you have a name of the series, but uh, I don't. We're talking, we're talking creepy Pokemon, and um, not clickbait creepy Pokemon, although they will be scattered around here because you kind of have to mention Hypno and everyone. But we're talking like, let's start off to give them a, a taste of one meme. Here's a Pokemon you probably haven't read. Um, the lore surrounding. Uh, how about you go read some stuff about our little psychic type? Are we talking about the psychic type from Nova. Gen 5? Yes. Ooh, we're talking about Goth Rita. This is interesting. Okay. Dim the lights and put on your creepy voice. Honestly, just have Vampivore. <laughs> just, just say it. Maybe she'll be creepy enough. No, 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 no. I have to pull into one of my supervillain acts for this one. All right, just remember feminine. <laughs> feminine. That's going to be interesting, isn't it? Oh my. Uh, I don't know. Not, you know, because because could be could be plenty of things. Could be. This is all. This is basically the channel I'm retreating to where I can be weird, and people who know me won't see it. <laughs> yeah, really, though. Anyway, they use hypnosis to control people in Pokemon. Tales of Gotharita leading people astray are told in every corner. Thank you. Anyway, I find this rather interesting. Children. You, you misread that. It's children, right? Is it children? Yeah, it's no, children. No, it says people. It says leading people astray. It must be in a different one of the Pokedex entries that talks about. Oh, right. In a different... Oh, let me tackle this. I don't have the direct quote in front of me, but he'll read it in a sec. In a different Pokedex entry, or story entry, or one of the cards or something, it reads that Gothitelle um, will often hypnotize children in their sleep and bring them out to play with them and make them their friends. Or turn them into friends. 
So yeah. sleeping children will be abducted by Gotharita to go play with and be their friends for the night, but only on the nights where is it the full moon or is it the Would you like me to read the Pokedex description for you? Yes. Okay, here we go. According to many old tales, it creates friends for itself by controlling sleeping children on starry nights. Stars. Stars. Controlling Stars are sleeping pretty. children on starry nights. Stars are very important here because... To the entire line. Yeah. Because they're based on oracles and stuff, but... Yeah. Just uh, consider that. Controlling sleeping children. Not, not, even... putting, not putting children to sleep and or hypnotizing them or anything like that. No. Taking sleeping children. Can you imagine that kind of dream? The dreams you would be having while you're mm. being abducted to go play tea with a mysterious star Pokemon? Yeah. I mean, that Pokedex description we just read isn't the only one that involves the stars. Definitely. The whole the whole line. Uh, no, I'm just talking about Gotharita in general. Okay, go ahead. Starlight is the source of their power. At night, they mark star positions by using psychic power to float stones. They make star charts. Yeah, essentially, they're making their own star charts. Stars are what give them their power, which is why they're able to control sleeping kids on starry nights and because so, it buys their power. And so they would want to make charts of when the stars would be at their brightest so that they can plan around them and make playdates on those special days. Exactly. And we all love having playdates with friends. I mean, back when you were all youngins and whatnot. Yes, 5,000 years ago. 5,000 years ago in ancient Egypt, yada, 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 no one cares. Is that 13? <laughs> no, they lasted forever, who cares? Um, <laughs> I, I should have said 1,000 years ago to make you sound like a gothic vampire. Uh, Speaking of gothic vampires, we'll get to that eventually. We'll get there eventually. Ooh, I'm gonna enjoy that. This is also the uh, place where I'll put my, where we will put our um, original character stuff and and role playing stories. Yes, yes, it will be. Anyway, I'd like to get on the topic of Grumpig now. Is that fine? Fuck with you? this thing. Fuck this thing. What Grumpig? Or? Yeah, read it. Ooh. <laughs> By the way, we're not just reading trashy Pokedex entries, we're also using all sorts of other sources, like um, uh, anime. Yep. Um, even though the anime is pretty trash too. Uh, Candleleaf Library and a bunch of stuff like that. Yeah. Pokedex, um, not Pokedex, uh, descriptions on Pokemon TCG cards. All sorts of stuff. All sorts of stuff. Also, so, the anime has gotten better and better in terms of you know, lore. Perfect said, she wants to go in the box. The box with the hole over there. And then I walk over and there's Sam and Herman just, just cornering her to make her say Special in. guest today is roommate number one. <laughs> yes, roommate number one. Say hi, roommate number one. Man, I had a burp, damn it. <laughs> roommate number one, come on down. <laughs> uh, we're we're da, da, recording da, da, da. just by saying, say hi. Awkward. <laughs> bye, bye. Bye, Jess. Anywho. Like what? Does she even like Pokemon? I have no idea. <laughs> what her being insane. I have no idea about her when it comes to Pokemon. Anywho. Watch her be Vamp of War. Dun, dun, dun. I'd rather not. Um, which one were we talking about? We were talking about Grumpig. Grumpig. Yes, Grumpig. Here we go. This is going to be interesting. Nobody knows about Grumpig. Nobody, Nobody knows it. that Grumpig is a scary motherfucker. Yeah, I'm going to read its Pokemon, Ruby, and Sapphire dex descriptions. Actually, they're also the same descriptions for uh, the new game, so I'll use those. Grumpig uses the black pearls on its body to amplify its psychic power waves for gaining total control over its foe. When this Pokemon uses its special power, its snorting breath grows labored. Damn. It's just gross. Yeah. There's nothing um, fun about that. Hold that thought. Its Alpha Sapphire mm. description says Grumpig uses the black pearls on its body to wield its fantastic powers. When it is doing so, it dances bizarrely. 
This Pokemon's black pearls are valuable as works of art. First of all, who's going to actually value this little tiny black ball on a psychopathic pig? Because you could possibly control people with it. Imagine getting people to just stare at this blob for 20 minutes while you go while you just sneak in their pockets and rob them of money or whisper nothings into their ear and say, you love this art. This is the best art in the world. And this is why Grumpig is creepy, folks, because mind control. <laughs> yeah, it's not hypnosis and I think cute. It's not it's not playing or, you know, creepy, disturbing, childish, girly things. No, it's just straight up rapey mind control. Yeah. <laughs> That's no fun. No, not at all. Oh. Um, what's next? Um, we've got multiple deck descriptions for Gardevoir, if you want to touch those. Um, what about, before we get into Gardevoir, um, did we have, who was another? Oh, let's just... Let's do Frostless. Ooh, ooh. Okay, I actually have to go into my game for this one. <laughs> Give me two seconds. I'm in the PC. I will entertain them until then. Um, Good. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, I don't know if I should tease about Vamp yet. Don't do it. Don't do okay, it. Okay, okay. I won't tell them about your, you know, mind control girlfriend Pokemon woman character who is totally using you to i don't even know what she could gain out of you other than entering into the real world you're a pretty intense role player my friend with your characters you have personality it's called the personality it's yes. called the personality and it's lovely yeah. Okay. oh yeah definitely a lot of great things yeah anyway Especially when they appear in your dreams what mm -hmm. into frostless now let's get into that according to its alpha sapphire description Legends in snowy regions say that a woman who was lost on an icy mountain was reborn as a Frostlass. Now, you see, this kind of Pokedex description reminds me of some Gen 1 bullshit. Are you following yeah, me here? Uh, yeah, and, you know, in other regions, too. Well, but, yeah. Uh, there's this reoccurring theme of Pokemon, of people and other things making and turning into Pokemon and all of that. And then there's the infamous stupid Kadabra story. Yeah, this slightly reminds me of the Kadabra story, but to a grander scale, because this particular Pokemon actually has a real-world counterpart. Yes, well, real-world mythology. Real-world mythology counterpart. Would you like to explain that while I look through yes, Pokedexes? I am, the, I'm, I am the resident expert on, monster, on uh, Eastern monsters and their female counterparts. Um, <clears throat> Yuki Ona. Yuki Ona are characters from Japanese mythology, um, similar to Kitsune's and all of that. Um, Yuki Ona are ice women. Literally, is their translation. It's ice lady, lady of ice. Um, they're you know spirits, ghosts. Uh, that basically the most common concept is that you'll be wandering through a blizzard, mm -hmm. lost, can't see a thing, and then you'll see something just out of the out of your what you can see so you just see kind of the outline and it's a tall well not always freakishly tall but like decently tall woman with a giant billowing uh kimono in the in the in the fog of the blizzard and you you know she's beckoning you over so you go and you keep following and following and following and following as they just float backwards endlessly as the blizzard gets worse and worse or clears up and then one of two things well one of a few things the first split in the stories is that um, either she leads you to a warm, cozy little cottage, or she just keeps leading you further and further into the blizzard until you fall over and die. Um, so it could just be a complete game, a complete way to just kill you and feast on your body, or you could just be hallucinating and there's nothing ever, never anything there, and this image is what's leading you to just walk, completely veer off course, and then just walk until you freeze to death. Um, or you get led to this cottage where it could turn out to be a lovely woman who wants to care take care of you forever and ever and have your children or all sorts of stuff. There's many stories involving um, a romantic relationship and all of that. Or 
more murder. There's many murdery ways the Yugiona story can go, but basically, Ice Lady in the Blizzard. Okay. Is also a ghost. You will. Um, and Frostless embodies this perfectly with Destiny Bond and you know Block and all sorts of crazy things. It's it very much embodies the possessive, creepy pa- factor of the Yugiona Lady. It does. Monster also, um, listening to you tell the stories of the Yukion, and that mm. definitely has a whole bipolar thing to it, doesn't it? <laughs> you just want to push more of our characters? Yeah. Uh, I can't wait until we get to use her. I can't either. One of our stories uh, that we just recently have um, involves a uh, frostless and a, a frostless that uh, does the whole lead you to a cottage thing, and then you know, as it's about to do some horrible shit to you or kill you or whatever, um, there is, so the Frostus is, uh, an orphan, and you know how, like, there'll be the orphan duo of, like, the shy kid and then the bossy kid who protects them? Mm-hmm. So the bossy sister is this Glaceon character who is just, like, totally oblivious to the evil, sinister ghost kind of stuff, and it's just like, oh, god, god damn it, I'm sorry, she does this all the time. Just go sit down. I'll tell her to stop doing this, and we'll get you home. Yeah. And meanwhile, the the frostless is just like was about to strangle someone. Is just like silently floats away. Yeah. Creepy stuff. Creepy feminine stuff. Gotta love it. God, I love all of that loveliness. Another Pokemon we could easily talk about is Dusk Noir. Yeah. Let Let's go, and then we'll do um Bennett next, Bennett. and then Nine Tails. Oh, yeah. Um, Dust Noir's Alpha Sapphire Pokedex description says that the antenna on its head captures radio waves from the world of spirits that command it to take people there. I like this. Direct it's, connection to the underworld. It's a, got a direct connection to the underworld. So essentially, Hades, Lord of the Underworld, is saying, Dust Noir, go bring me people. And he and does so. Notice how it's not. It's like a radio link, which means it's instantaneous, which means it could just be these roaming automatic sentinels. And, you know, we know that, you know, a bunch of Pokemon, even though they may look creepy, they have, you know, emotional interiors and everything because they can all form relationships, with trainers and all that. But deep down, there's probably some kind of trigger that can be turned on if whatever that lives down there needs some reaping. Yeah. Them dust noirs love their reaping. Yeah. So, um, want to go on to Bennett, do you? Yes. Um, so, Bennett and, Bennett and Frostless, and no, not Frost, um, a bunch, and Ninetales, a bunch of Pokemon have these stories about being created. Ninetales, nine wizards created a Frostless, or merged to form a Frostless, you know. Um, no, wait, Nine Whistlers did not form to f- f- merge to form a Frostless. Uh, form- nine Tails, Nine, nine tails. tails. There we go. And then, um... Oh, let's not forget the fact that Nine Tails is highly intelligent and... We'll get to Nine not- Tails. Okay, we are... Um, and the whole story of the, no. of the Bennett that was a doll that was thrown away and got really, really jealous and vowed to get revenge on the one that threw it away. The little kid threw it away and everything. And the... The thing that disproves all these arguments that people always say is like well every single bayonet can't be a thrown away pokemon we breed them you know there's no time for that to happen so we just write them off as stories Mm -hmm. but we found a way to prove all of these crazy stories except for the cadaver one to be totally completely true because if you have one pokemon that's not gen that's not um genderless like a legendary or anything or you know doesn't have an unknown egg group if you have one pokemon of any gender even if they don't have a gender of any specific egg group even if there's only one of it they can breed so if you create a genesect and if genesect wasn't of an unknown egg group if genesect had a bug egg group or something if you if nine wizards use their powers to create and merge into a pokemon a Ninetales, or if a doll is corrupted and turned into a Bennett, all these emotional, na- natu- nature, magical, raw energies convert into this elemental, this creature that is 
half mystical powerhouse thing and half biological Pokemon. And the biological Pokemon part is the part that can breed. And then they go and they reproduce and they make more of them. And thus, they create a whole line of Pokemon that spawned from the Pokemon that was spawned through these circumstances. So, yes, not all Ninetales are as powerful as this original Ninetales was, but they might all be descended from it. And, yeah, not every single Bennett was thrown away, but we still find Bennett hanging out in garbage cans and all these places because the original one was thrown away, and it the... the it's like an instinct that's carried through all of them. They all harbor the original Bennett's pain and revenge. Hmm. Can we get to Nine Tails now? Go ahead. You don't want to make any comments about Shuppet and Bennett? Not really. You kind of explained all of it. I mean, Shuppet's a Rotom. <laughs> yeah, well, duh. Let's be perfectly honest. The only thing that differentiates a Shuppet and a Rotom is the fact that Shuppet is nothing but a Rotom that's covered with the Reaper Cloth, to be real I, here. I do want to say, can you imagine if you were in the Pokemon world and you had a Shuppet and you gently pinched its the tip of its head, picked it up, and then put it over someone's head? Like if you just walked up to a kid and like, because it's hollow on the inside, right? It's it's a shuppet is they're just the cloth, right? Supposedly. So could you just kind of pull it over someone's head and then it could like possess them or something? That's some freaky stuff. That's that's the creepy freaky stuff that only you'll find on this channel. Only you'll find. Well, yeah. To be perfectly honest, I really don't think I've ever seen anybody go this in depth on creepy shit. When it comes to because they have to stick to the clickbait, but we are not doing that. So what do you think about what do you think? It's like, you know, what would you see if you looked in the back of a Shedinja? What would you feel if I took a Shuppet and just pulled it over your head? Um, I don't know. I'd probably wear it as a hat, to be perfectly honest. <laughs> Because I'm the only person who would be stupid enough to do that. <laughs> Hashtag it's a hat. Hashtag it's a hat. You'll all get along with our uh, our memes and our uh, our inside jokes eventually. If you if you hang out, you'll it'll be a good payoff. It'll be a wonderful payoff. Anywho, nine tails. Nine tails. Okay, so as my lovely friend here mentioned. That legend has it that Nine Tails came into being when nine wizard pos nine wizards uh, possessing sacred powers merged into one. This Pokemon is highly intelligent. It can understand human speech. I mean, if we've looked at through the anime and whatnot, all Pokemon seem to be able to understand human speech. But it seems to me that Nine Tails is the only one that can really communicate back. I have to send something. Keep talking. Anyway, so Ninetales to me is one of those Pokemon that I love because it's another one of those Japanese story-based Pokemon being it's designed based off of a Kitsune or the Nine-Tailed Foxes, if you will, for all you Naruto fans, you know who Kitsune! I'm, for all you Naruto fans, you know who I'm talking about. And... Ninetales is one of those mons that I love because, for those of you who don't know, I'm a Digimon fan, and I spent a lot of time watching Digimon Season 3. I didn't see enough Digimon in my life. Was there a Kitsune Digimon? There was. Renamon in Digimon Tamers digivolves into Kyubimon, which takes the form of a Ninetales fox. And... Ever since watching that, every nine tails I've ever gotten, I've named Kayubimon for that exact reason. And they're all based off of the Kitsune, which is the nine tailed fox of Japanese legend. Which is. I realized we could get Bushy on just through his stream if I put him up to the mic. Wait, what? Uh, Bushy went streaming. Oh, interesting. Anyway, 
wonder if he has anything to say. Um, I'll just tell him you're live. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, this is fun. Okay. Um, anyway. Nine yeah. tails. Okay, so want to talk about the rest of the Pokemon entries? Because it has like eight of them. Uh, yeah. Give me two seconds. I think, I think Bushy is about to respond. respond. <laughs> am, I, am I live right at this moment? But, uh, as far as, I don't know, creepy Pokemon goes. Do you have anything interesting to say, bro? Um, I'm in the process of getting it. No, I'm talking about Bushy. Oh, Bushy. He's on the, he's on the chat delay. Oh. God love that flower soundtrack. Yeah, actually, that's kind of nice. If it's streaming flower right now. Oh. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, pretty much any ghost Pokemon is pretty creepy. True. Because they all like kill each other and stuff, or at least kill people. Okay. Um. Like okay, I guess we're talking about that for uh, this is gonna be the bushy segment. Okay. Um. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna talk about Pokemon killing each other, comma. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, this is what I like about knowing people. <laughs> yep. Okay, so we'll finish up about Nine Tails, and then we'll start talking about Pokemon that kill things. We'll yeah. Talk about killing. Yeah. <laughs> so Nine Tails, the curse, the classic Brock pulls on the tail of a Nine Tails anime joke curse thing. This is all Gen One, so take it with a grain of salt. That is true. It is all Gen One. But let's pull on a Kitsune's tail. Let's pull on a Kitsune's tail. According to its Pokemon Red Dex description, it states that it's very smart and very vengeful. Grabbing one of its many tails will result in a thousand year curse. One thing I don't there's one thing I don't like about this at all. Is is it cursing the rest of your family for a thousand years? I wouldn't think so. That's more of an east. That's more of a um, Middle Eastern thing than a, than a full Eastern thing. Good, because there's no way a human being is going to live for a thousand years. There's no possible way. Well, I mean, things did, might have back in the day. Hold up, there's a bug in my room. Eh, hold up. I'll get you. Anyway, and. With its I'm gold. not a violent person. I just have a lot of bugs in my room. <laughs> um, there's also its gold description, which says that some legends claim that each of its nine tails has its own unique type of special mystic power. I'm sorry, nine tails. I have yet to see it actually happen. <laughs> um, Imagine being able to have nine cop outs in a story. Yeah. We need to come up with a Nine Tails character now. Like, think about the semantics in the translation. Pulling one of its many tails. What if it doesn't mean any one of its tails, but it means one specific tail has the power to curse you for a thousand years? As in, that was the power of that, of one of the nine wizards. Whoa. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, let's, oh, no. What are the other eight? What are the other eight? Let's, let's, let's make some up. Can, hold on. I read, I read something. Something rather... Eh. Ninetales casts a sinister light from its bright red eyes to gain total control over its foe's mind. This Pokemon is said to live for 1,000 years. Damn. Well... Holy snap! What if the curse is it gains control of you for a thousand years? That would explain. Plausible. Because doesn't, I mean, the anime sucks, but um, doesn't in the anime when Brock pulls in it, doesn't its eyes go all red? Yes, it does. So the curse is it takes over you for a thousand years. You become its thrall. I really mm -hmm. want to get to that particular topic now with the word you just said, but we got to wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, so... so let's that's talk your... about Pokemon with dreams. Pokemon with dreams. Oh, no, we have to talk about killing each other. Killing we'll each other. We'll get there, though. We'll get there. Bushy's topic we have to talk about. 
Yeah, we'll, um, how about we get to dreams before we get to, um... Before kill. we get to killing? Yeah, that might be better. Yeah, I'm actually going to use the first lovely dream Pokemon, and I'm going to go straight from its Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. Actually, it's its original description, too. And I actually have a personal story for this one. I was first off, do you, have, do you hear my fan in the background? Nope. Good. Go ahead. Anyway, I have a Creepy personal voice. story for this one. I was telling Pat earlier that I'm going to read the truth. If your nose becomes itchy while you are sleeping, it's a sure sign that one of these Pokemon is standing above your pillow and is trying to eat your dream through your nostrils. God now, damn it, you went straight to these two? Yes, I did. I had to. Clickbait, no. No, no, no. I'm only doing this one for right now. I'm going to save the other half of the evolutionary yeah, line. Not a lot of people do drowsy anyway. Hey, he's talking about drowsy. That needs to come on, come on. Yes, I know. She does. Anyway. You can tell her trying to train your cat. Uh huh. That was roommate number one again. Sadly, there aren't a lot of creepy cats. The closest is Mew. Yeah, but no. The reason I jumped right to this one because we were talking about dreams that I needed to get this out of there is I have a personal experience with this one. My little brother, when we were growing up, and even now, in the middle of his in the middle of the night, he'll still be passed out unconscious, and he'll start rubbing his nose and rubbing his face and whatnot. And according to this lovely Pokedex description, Drowsy's trying to eat his dreams. There has to be some kind of psychological folklore thing in Japan yeah. about having an itchy nose while you sleep. There has to be. Because of the... We'll, we'll have there to is. visit that. There is. According to the Fire Red description... A, it is a descendant of the legendary animal Baku, which is said to eat dreams. It is skilled at hypnotism. Well, we'll have to research that for a follow-up episode, I guess, on your hypno we episode. Definitely will, because holy hero, what the hell is that? Yeah, you gotta find out the whole mystery of, um... It's probably a whole shrine dedicated to the itchy nose dream eater. Dandy. Yeah. yeah. But now we'll get to the other half of this lovely line later on. But no, Pokemon in dreams. I have this one that we've been hinting at this entire time. We're going straight to her. We're going straight to her. Okay, so let's, let's, because I'll probably edit in the picture here. So this all started um, back when we, um, a long time ago, before Swift came into the chat room, a friend of ours was you know, named Sam, we were posting pictures and everything, and she posted, one of us posted a picture of, us, of this Curlia yeah. that looked really adorable and evil and cute and everything. So we made a character out of that called Ivory, a bunch of cool backstory with her, and then that uh, that's how we created characters in the chat room. We just kept posting cute pictures until we found one that looked like it told a story. There was one picture that told a heavy story. This picture of a floating Shiny Gardevoir with a black heart. Mm. And then one night, Bush, not Bushy, uh, Swift had a dream about this black hearted Gardevoir. Some, for some, shiny. it's a Lucario, but whatever. <laughs> what? For some random reason, I was a Lucario in the said dream, but whatever. <laughs> Go ahead. What happened in that dream? Oh, what happened in that dream? All I ended up doing was saving a Gardevoir from this evil, blank-hearted Gardevoir as a random as hell Lucario. And I'm not even sure why I was Lucario. Maybe we were talking about it beforehand or something, but... I showed you that picture from Lunar. It's about the Curlia trying to save the tied-up Mega Gardevoir from a Mega Lucario. That was it. That was the reason I was probably Lucario. <laughs> <laughs> But no, it was just the regular everyday damsel in distress from the evil Titan. It was essentially a Legend of Zelda scenario. Yeah. So you told me about that, and then we kept this character in our heads, and you started calling her a vampire. I did. And uh, eventually we got to drawing, and he told me to trace this Gardevoir and redraw her a bit. And so we ended up with Vampivore, whom I will be putting on the screen now, hopefully. 
with her little horns and her little thang. Um, and then uh, a few days after that, we both went to sleep and we both had a dream about her. But we both had completely different ones. Yeah, it's uh, nothing stupid. Um, <laughs> your dream first? Ooh, okay. So as he mentioned... Okay, first off, I should say that we're... Um, we've had some uh, inconsistencies with working with some of our RP friends, we, so we decided to make our own world so that we have more freedom and we don't have to work off the Hoenn or any other map. We can make our own world with Pokemon people, characters from outside the Pokemon world and everything, this big kind of just mess, rift-ridden world. Yeah. And, and um, there are, you know, basically what it happened. what happened is it's this giant... Every time a new portal is opened and a bunch of characters from bunch of species from one world enter into this one like humans and then some mythological creatures and plants and animals and every time a new batch of them join they blend with the life the life that's already there so when animals were sent into the world they mixed with humans to make anthropomorphic creatures and fauna kin when fairy tale creatures came in there were dragon kin and fairy people and all that stuff when pokemon came in they mixed with people but they also mixed with the animals and they mixed with the fair the fairy tale creatures and everything so there's a story that we have about this one Gardevoir, a shiny, very vengeful Gardevoir, that went to a cave and found the last living vampire. Because all the fairy tale creatures in the time before Pokemon knew that vampires were a big problem that could infect the entire and turn everyone into a vampire, they went in a giant genocide and killed every single vampire they could find. Mm -hmm. In the age of Pokemon coming into this world, this Gardevoir finds the last vampire in this secluded cave and makes a deal to get the vampire's powers but with the promise that she, that she will bring back the age of vampires and get revenge on the people that you know massacred her people mm. or something like that yeah and then you had this dream and then i did um my dream essentially we found the character he mentioned ivory but we found another the other curlia Ebony, and it was essentially the final fight between Pat's character and my character, Ebony and Ivory, against just Vampivoir. And Ebony and Ivory are getting their asses handed to them by this all powerful vampire. And then the vampire turns on Pat's character and my character. And that causes Ebony and Ivory to evolve. And then together they combine their energy to take out Vampivoir. And it just kind of ends there with the eventual befriendment and... More like appeasement and alliance. Appeasement. A weird alliance with yeah. Vampivoir. With the Vampivoir and just working with it and all that other fun. And eventually her a Vampivorite. Mm, I created the Vampivorite for her, too, so she better like me now. <laughs> well, maybe her whole plan was to get close to you in the first place. That might be. I mean, Because here's the concept, okay? I'm going to play into this idea. Um, I have morning dreams and I have night dreams. Night dreams are the ones that are very deep and chaotic and make no sense and everything, but morning dreams are where I... I'm still in bed, and I want to go back to dreams and keep them going for a few hours while I lay in bed. I have a bit of control over these and everything like that, but it's not really a lucid dream. It's more like a lingering half-awake dream. And I had one of them about Vampivore. I don't have dreams about characters or things that actually exist in my day-to-day -day life or conversation with people often. Usually it's just brand new nonsense. While you had a whole fight scene that ended with you and her being side by side, she just drank me. She just bent to my neck and just sucked plasma, like not blood, but like life fluid until I passed out. And then I went to sleep and slept for about four hours. So, um, um I, yeah. I have a feeling, I have a feeling that she treats you a bit. I think so. I mean, personally, I treat her a little better, too, so it's a love-hate relationship between the two. We, we all know why she's treating him well, and we all know that it's because, you know, you're her tool to get into the real world. 
you're going to be turned into her thrall, and then she's going to take over your body, and then she's going to start collecting people for her army in the real world because she thinks that'll work. Don't tell her that vampires and magic don't exist in our world, and she'll just be a crazy person. No, I won't do that. I won't go that far. I'm not that mean. I mean, I'm mean, but I'm not that mean. What? I keep talking now. I have to understand something. Oh, uh, okay. Anyway, but yeah, I treat her like I do every other persona I have in my head. I have slight split personality where I can shut my current consciousness down and just put one of my characters in complete control. A very optimistic one, though. That's that's the important part. Very optimistic. Like, we all have we all have our vampires, and we all. we all keep them in line, or we don't. Mm-hmm. You know, I have I have Taylor, who you know I have this whole philosophy of how you know when artificial intelligence you know, and, and mental uploading become a thing, you know, I'll finally be able to give my characters. Um, independent thought and be able to live their own lives and everything, and I want that to happen. Treat them as my children, but also as my equals, all that. But if I weren't... I say that whenever you're writing a story for a character, never write bad things. No. Never write sad things. Never put effort in to make their world terrible. Because if you're writing from experience and <laughs> this world... Sad stuff is just going to happen when you look back, no matter what you do. It just happens. I wrote a bunch of stories that had nothing to do with, like, totally empty, devoid of significant plot. And that added onto the plot over time. And there were a bunch of sad stuff that happened that I didn't even write. They just made sense as I went back. There was one character I didn't do that with, though. Taylor. And uh, I invested a lot of time... Because I said, I'm going to make a character with a sad story background. And that led to one of the most unstable, deep, developed, homicidal, most powerful and dangerous characters I ever created. And if I let her loose in the world on whatever day before I tried to make everyone's lives better, she might have killed everyone, including me. She definitely would have killed my friend Kizu. Like, straight-up murder. Mm. We work our hardest to make characters that don't want to kill people, especially not you, when, if they were given a chance to walk around in the real world. So, no. optimism is key. Optimism is always key. I think that may also be why Vamp of War treats me a little bit better than she does you. I think it treated me bad. She just kind of was intimate. It was strange. Yeah. Um. Uh. So, what else do we have on the list? Um. Anything creepy from the Guard of War line? Anything creepy from the Guard of War line? Let's have a look, shall we? Oh, and if there's nothing, we can go back to the rest of uh, Goth- Gotharita's line. And we also have shit it. there. And we also have that particular piece of clickbait we have to get to eventually. Um, yeah, but I think that deserves its own episode. Yeah. I think so, too. Personally, because I did my first video on my channel about it, too. So. Yeah. So, I think it does. I think it deserves its own thing. Yeah, there's going to be more of this, so make sure to subscribe. Yeah, lots of subscribing. Um, hmm. You can also find us on Pokeamino. You know? You can. I'm the Swift Swalo on Pokemon. I am Pat's Plays DBT. That's two T's in the name. Yeah. Um. It doesn't really seem like there's. M- All right. Let's let's go to the first in the Gotharita line. Um. Uh, I mean, uh, there's stuff for Gardevoir, but there's not a lot for Curlia. Uh. Let Let's Let's go back to Gotharita. Gotharita. What's Gotharita's got- first evolution? The The basic. Gothita. Gothita. So Gothita is all about staring at things. It enti- its entire life, it's just staring. This this evolution has nothing to do with any of the plot of any of the other region, any of the other things. It just stares as if it knows something. Oh wait, no it it has to do with the third evolu- the second evolution's um future sight, the final evolution's future sight. That's probably what it has to deal with. I'm bringing it up. Yeah, but it is... It just stares. Just It's always staring. It always knows something that other people don't. 
Yeah, according to its black thing, their ribbon-like feelers increase their psychic power. They are always staring at something, so of course they're staring at something. But its white description says they intently observe both trainers and Pokemon. Apparently they are looking at something that only Gothita can see. Your future. Yes. So let's bring... And then, yeah, keep going. Uh, go to the next evolution, the final evolution. But as with any um, evolution line, there's one member of the evolution line that kind of does its own thing. Like, in this case, Gothita is like, oh my god. And then Gotharita is just like, I I don't care about responsibility. I'm just going to go fuck with people and make friends while they tea in the woods. Mm-hmm. And then after that evolves, it takes on a more serious approach again. Now, all of us, many people hate Gothitel. It's like, ooh, it's a gross trap, weird, ugh, it looks disgusting. But I, hopefully this situation will let you know on just how much you should respect Gothitel. Because I mean, Gothitel is a really sad story. Yeah, Gothitel may be a sad story, but from facing Gothitel in competitive play, competitive, I mean, Gothitel has gone from the OU tier to the UU tier, but Gothitel is still a force to be reckoned with, especially if it's a modest or timid nature with Shadow Tag. Yeah, holding- the fact that it's Shadow Tag is like, what? Hold, hold on, holding the choice scarf with trick. That's as soon as it gets that, everything is deadly and Gothitel is scary in competitive play. Knowing from experience. So, but in, Gothitel's Pokedex. Gothitel's Pokedex. There are multiple which I will and if you'll remember previously, Gotharita's Pokedex and it's even its psychic powers require the stars. So do Gothotels. Its Pokemon Black description says starry skies thousands of light years away are visible in the space distorted by their immense psychic power. So these and things. There, so is there the Pokemon's power or the star's power? I'm not sure. Yeah. But they can... if it's a star's power, then that tells us that the stars actually have their own psychic power or they are creatures themselves. Yeah. And but if it's the... there, as in the Pokemon, then that means that this Pokemon can move star systems with consistent planning. Yeah. But if you remember with Gotharita, it was essentially making its own star maps. Yeah. And then it made the Hold star on. maps a reality. Hold on. <laughs> In its white description, it says they can predict the future from the placement and movement of the stars. They can see their trainers' lifespans. You see, this has something to do with the star maps that it's making in its previous evolution, because it has to know where the movement of the stars are in order to predict the future. And then there's another entry. Yes, this one. It can see the future from the movement of the stars. When it learns its trainer's lifespan, it's cry. it cries in sadness. Gardevoir really gets showed up by Gothitelle in terms of this. Like, Gardevoir and Khaled, yeah, they protect their trainer, but Gothitelle cries over its trainer. Mm-hmm. Like... We've like o- only a few Pokemon are said to cry endlessly, like in mourning. Kid Pokemon, dead kid Pokemon, they cry a lot, and then not much else. This is a fully grown maiden Pokemon that cries just completely, just forever. Just cries, it just starts crying, never stops crying. Because it sees, like, it might as well turn into an alarm clock at that point. Because if you know this and you see your your Pokemon crying, you know that you're going to have a sad, sad death pretty soon. (laughs) Think of the feeling, the gut feeling, when you're like, first you see something's wrong. 
you go check up on your on your Pokemon. Then you see that they're crying. Then there's that wave of emotion where you're like, oh my god, my Pokemon's crying. Like, not a baby, a fully grown Pokemon is crying. Then there's that moment when you realize why it's crying. Then there's that moment of realizing something terrible is going to happen to you. And then finally there's that moment where you just get next to your Gothitelle and you start crying with it. That's forget it's the goth, right there, not because of some stupid fashion thing. This is Kalos. It's goth because it's legitimately depressed. Mm-hmm. Well, you mentioned getting down with your gothitel and crying with it. Let's not forget the most important part of that entire situation. Getting down with your gothitel and giving it a really, really, really big hug. Yeah. Because uh, it probably needs it. Definitely. We I always mean, say Gardevoir looks so much like a human, but like... Gothitelle could be a rock in a dress or a potato. But if it <laughs> cried like this and you knew why it cried, you'd treat that thing like your best friend for 12 years just diagnoses you with cancer. But they're sadder about it than you are. Yeah, because they already knew about it. Yeah. that That's like... That's like you're on your deathbed and you're like, you've already come to term with your death or something. And then your best friend, your childhood friend after 12 or 24 or 80 years walks when it walks in and says, it's my fault. And just cries. Yeah. You got to think about that kind of emotional breakdown oh and the emotional psyche of all of the Pokemon. And with the Gothitelle's Pokedex description being the way it is, you have to think, what other emotions does Gothitelle have? It's it's not just some trashy emo kid. It's goth because it needs to be. It, it has like at you know, at the point where it's a level hundred Pokemon, it's cried so much that it can't cry anymore. Yeah. And then that's the moment when someone really becomes goth, is when they've cried too much. No, actually, when you reach the level 100 stage, there is still room for crying. When you reach the fully EV trained, fully IV bred <laughs> level 100 with the right nature, then there's no more crying involved, ever. No, then you cry because of how much your life you've wasted. You cry so much because you've spent so much of your life making the perfect Pokemon that they're just like, they, they were crying because they saw you dying over a heart attack of trying to perfect this Pokemon. And imagine the guilt of, like, you're finally perfect. And they're just staying there, and they're still crying, because ever since they reached level 34 or whatever, they knew that their trainer was going to die from trying to train it into perfection. And its yeah. whole life, it was trying to get the wrong EVs so that it would, like, screw up the plan or something to try and, like, prevent that future. But that only produces to give you more stress because you have to get reset bags and then redo it all over again. And then they realize that them trying to disrupt the future cause the future and cause you to die of stress from a heart attack. And that actually kind of makes you want to tear up a little bit. Yeah. That's like, yeah. that's an entire movie right there. <laughs> yeah, really that's though. At least an episode of the anime. Yeah, um, I have to agree. Wow, I didn't even know I was going to go there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we need something to get rid of the depression. Anything you've got? Um, got any creepy fun things? Um, creepy fun Well, things. okay, um, while we think of those things, let's talk about how we've... Gardevoir keeps talking about this black hole, but nowhere is there ever any use of this black hole. There's not even a single move that has a black hole in it. Actually, sorry about that. And we're back. And we are back. Sorry, I had a slight technical difficulty. Siri decided to be dumb and activate when I didn't want it to. So, black holes? That's where I'm going to. Uh, nope, that's that particular Pokemon. That's that fat thing. Uh, huh, there we go. Um,. To protect its trainer, it will expend all its psychic power to create a small black hole. 
There's another mention of a black hole here somewhere. Aha! Uh -huh. Gardevoir has the psychonetic power to distort the dimensions and create a small black hole. This Pokemon will try to protect its trainer even at the risk of its own life. Now that is ridiculously okay, deep. Okay, that... I've never considered that Gardevoir can twist the dimensions. Okay, let's bring this back to our friend. We're Ooh. placing their story in a world full of dimensional rift holes that bring Pokemon from and other creatures from other universes into that world. This is a Pokemon that creates rifts and is its entire existence is devoted to its trainer. This Gardevoir could have this or the entity that this Gardevoir resembles could have come from any universe and thus a parallel universe possibly. What if in a parallel universe where you weren't Okay, so Blake, your character that you know embodies you and all that stuff in the stories. Blake was a bird trainer, and Blake's sister was a psychic trainer. Blake's mother was a psychic trainer, and Blake's father was a psychic trainer. Nope, Blake's father was a bird keeper. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's a parallel universe where instead of your sister getting an Abra, you get a Routes, and you are the psychic trainer. And you have this Gardevoir that you have this uh, strong emotional attachment to. And then while you're experimenting or something where you get into th the fight where Blake loses his eye with the Skarmory and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Imagine that happening in a parallel universe where you have a Gardevoir that creates a black hole trying to save you and accidentally pulls itself and a bunch of shit into an entire new blank universe and then spends its entire life trying to open up rift holes so that it'll eventually one day pull its trainer back in so that it can devote its life to them again. So and they come across you and then they're pissed off because it's you, but it's not you. And, okay, so that that explains why I have the connection with Vampivar. I get it. Because Blake in one way, because she is the, is the Pokemon that belongs to the trainer of Blake in one, uh, Blake the Psychic Trainer. So she runs into Blake, the fly, the bird keeper, and is kind of pissed off and doesn't know what the fuck is going on. And then it co connects with you in a completely different set of universes. And then it's like, you know, it, it, connect, it probably connects to you more than it connects to Blake because you're every single Blake in, that ever was and every other one of your characters too. Mm -hmm. So if it can get good with you, then that means that she can get you to get her to her original trainer. I mean, as much as I like the fact that I need to get the Vampifor back to his original trainer, I'm thinking... It what? Are you sad that it makes her less evil? It does. It slightly makes her less evil, but at the same time, if you think about it, during the whole combating with the whole Vampivar, Blake the Bird Keeper... And Vampivar could eventually become tighter. And you know how Blake already has the mystery of this, which is already one different Pokemon that he's got? Yep. The Vampivar could be that one other Pokemon that sets him over the edge that he, with the Swellow that he always uses, would also be another Pokemon that he always uses. I'm just... Consider that you fell in love with someone okay and then trying to protect them you separate yourself from them farther than you can possibly imagine then you tried to get her back by opening up rift holes or whatever um and you eventually get a parallel universe version of her back and then when trying to connect with this different version of her that you know isn't your her you get a connection with fucking god the person the entity that created all of anything that ever existed conceptually that you could possibly imagine, it's just some kid making up stories. And they haven't even written up the story part where you came from yet. So then you, you try to manipulate God, your creator of everything, to create the place where you came from so that you can reunite with the trainer that hasn't even been written yet that you devote your life to. Writing your own story because of your obligation to the story where you came from. It's a paradox. 
I love it. I fucking love this shit. This is what we do on a regular basis, people. <laughs> we do this all the time. Lock that information up and don't let her get at it until it's time. No, she'll probably get get at it in your sleep. Pat, why don't you keep it locked away? Because I'm very sure Pat can keep things further away from her. Yeah, but can. I'm also the one that's more of a pervert and more likely to give up information if she bites me again. I mean, she hasn't hypnotized you or anything. She fucking zonked me out from biting me and draining me of my plasma. Yeah, I mean, to be perfectly honest, I'm the kind of person who will, in my consciousness... We've we've had this conversation before, haven't we? We're just getting deja vu, aren't we? I think so. <laughs> I, I said that she would bite me. I said that I had deja vu of having deja vu of this moment three weeks ago. I said that in the future I was going to have a dream where she bites me, and then and then I was going to be talking about it. And you were going to give the whole thing about you're the kind of... This is why I'm the romantic one and you're the aromantic one, because I'm the kind of person who would sit down at a table with Vamp of War and have a cup of tea and ask it how its day was. While you're just oh, getting your geez. neck bitten by a vampire. <laughs> I just... I... I can't believe the deja vu that's going on. You're confirming this, right? I'm not crazy? We uh, had this deja vu moment? We've had this deja vu moment multiple times. And I like, I was awake, like half awake, but I was awake enough, to know that that was an awful thing. I wasn't making that dream up because I commented about it earlier. That was a yep. completely independent scenario. So that deja vu really was a future type thing. What the fuck? Anywho, any other creepy fun things? I just can't stop thinking about the paradox. There's your creepy fun things for today, people. <laughs> Paradoxes and deja vu. There's your creepy fun stuff. Oh my god. I love that she's a freaking paradoxical being that needs to... that Like, this is a time travel shit. She needs to create her own backstory... Mm -hmm. But, like, she already knows it happened, but she needs to fulfill it by fucking manipulating God, who's just some 20s kid uh, kid in their 20s. Hi, I'm the guy in their 20s. <laughs> Can you imagine if you were trying to find the one you loved, and you ended up finding out your God of your entire world was some kid you could manipulate easily into writing... Mm -hmm. Anything you wanted? That would definitely be cool. Like, imagine the power you would feel when you realize that this kid you're talking to is God and you're, like, on equal footing with them and they respect you as an equal. Yes. Anywho. God, I cannot let go of that. Any final thoughts? Um, Sylveon? Fairies? Fairies. Thank you. Let's start with the most obvious one, aromatase. Um, I've kind of, I've kind of backtracked on on aromatase. I actually cut that portion of um, of our podcast or something like that because. Um, oh, did you? Like like a small part of it because I sound like an asshole. Um, aromatase actually doesn't have anything creepy in their Pokedex. It just talks about smelling. It smells being either really good or really gross. They could have taken it to many places, but they didn't. Let's talk about where they could have taken Aromatisa's design. They could have done so much scent stuff with mind control and everything. Because I'm going to tell you, scent-based hypnosis and mind control and stuff is awesome. Because well... I can say cotton candy and you smell cotton candy. It's much easier to imagine a smell than it is a sound or a feeling or a physical contact. Or anything like that. Actually, it does have something slightly strange in its Pokedex description. Shoot. It devises various scents, pleasant and unpleasant, and, admit, and emits scents that its enemies dislike in order to gain an edge in battle. So it's able to manipulate its opponent in, by using yeah, the scent that gives up. They took it in a tame way, but think of all the possibilities. Yeah, think of what they could do. Think of all the possibilities. 
<laughs> pheromones. Um, anyway, uh, any other fairy types? Well, let's say let's click on the type that says fairy and see what happens. So we've got a lovely listy thing of fairies. I hope. When it comes to f pure fairy types, we've got Clefable. Clefable's always interesting. True. I'm getting bit to hell down here. Uh, I know. Um, let's Sylveon. Let's go with this one. Sure. Because Sylveon, the ribbons that are on it are not ribbons. Well, they are ribbons. They're just ribbons made of flesh. I love how I didn't even have to say that. You just kind of took the words right out of my mouth. Your mouth? My mouth. <laughs> um, let's see. What other fairy types are weird? Mr. Mime, I, I've always hated. Yep. Next. <laughs> um, I have a personal vendetta against Mawile, but we won't go there. Wait, wait, wait. Hold up. Why? No, sorry. Against Mega Mawile, but we won't go there. Oh, just because it's competitive stuff? Let's talk about Mawile, though. Let's talk about Gen 3 Pokemon like Sableye and Mawile. Mawile. Yeah. Okay. They're amazing, and they're cool. They Mawile are. adorable. That Mawile and Sableye are amazing. Sableye's Mega, even, is lovely. Just so good. So good. Mawile's Mega was good enough to be Bandage. sent into the Uber tier. Like uh, Mega... Um, Lucario, yeah. Kangaskhan, Salamence, all that. It's gone took a while. Bla Fuck no, it's gone took a little while, but Salamence was right up there as soon as it came out. Uh, I really need to tell my Mega Mawile story now. Go for uh, it. Uh, Just make it I was cool. on. I was on. <laughs> you want creepy? I'll give it to you. I was on yeah. the Metro Transit on my way home from school and I decided it was a good idea to battle this guy I was sitting next to. And oh I don't God, remember such a you you know how many creepy creepypastas they can make from the PSS? Yeah I know. Oh my God, we need to write a story about a hex maniac that you see on the bus. Yeah. Oh but my anyway, God. And... I need to start writing. You keep talking. I'm gonna start writing. Okay. This particular opponent that I was using again, I don't even remember what teams we were using. But all I know is I had a Mega Charizard X on my team, and he had a Mega Mawile on his. And I swept five out of six of his Pokemon with nothing but the Mega Charizard. Next thing I know, out comes this Mega Mawile, and it sweeps my entire team with nothing but Sucker Punch. That sounds like you were just a BK, bruh. Yeah. I have, ever since then, I've had a personal vendetta against Mega Mawile. Sounds like you need to get good and stop using attack moves. <laughs> Wrecked. I'm, of course, better now at the game, so <laughs> Mega Mawile is not as big of an issue, especially not with my new Mega Charizard. You want to know uh, how I took care of Mega Mawile? Fire Punch. I had a Citrus Berry, Huge Power, Belly Jet Azumarill. With Brick Break, Play Rough, Knockwood Jet, and Belly Drum. Yeah. How do you hmm. like them apples? Personally, I would prefer Super Power over Brick Break, but okay. But mine was a sweeper, so it needed the lasting power. Yeah. Besides, Brick Break got rid of uh, Reflect and everything. Mm. Anyway, continuing on with fairies, let's go with the most useless fairy I've ever seen, Mega Audio. Is that only fairy when Omega's? Nope, it's half normal, half fairy. No, uh, is the normal half fairy? I think it just becomes a fairy when Omega evolves. Yeah, it only becomes fairy when Omega's. It's such a... Why? I don't know, but I'm trial trying to figure out why Game Freak decided that Audino needing Omega was necessary. <laughs> um, what other ones do we need to talk about? Dedenne. Um, Dedenne. No, Lovely. there's nothing creepy there. There's nothing creepy. Let's talk about my creepy boss, the story that I just made up. Okay. Okay, so imagine if some if a ghost girl creepy pasta kind of story could happen through the PSS. So you're getting on the bus late at night. 
There's, you know, some people on the bus, but it's not too crowded. And you see an open seat. You know, there's no one in that in that aisle. You sit down, and you relax. And you're looking at you're looking at the, um, you know, the city flyby or whatever. It's late at night, pitch black, so just some streetlights. And you turn, and then there's someone sitting next to you. You're like, oh, I didn't notice that someone was sitting here. And then you go to pull out your 3DS to keep playing, and there's a green light. And you got Street Pass. And then you enter into Pokemon, and it turns out there's someone on your PSS right next to you. And you look around, like, who has a 3DS on the train? And then sitting next to you is a person who looks like they're in a very not over the top, like very barely noticeable Hexmaniac cosplay. And they're just sitting there perfectly still with their arms crossed over their lap with a DS sitting perfectly on their on their thighs, like on top of their legs. Hmm. And it's got this blinking a blinking green light on it. And you go to challenge a person to a battle or a trade or something. Um and you, you you say you send you send them a like or a, a hey or an awesome or whatever it is a nice, and then th- they send you a nice back, but they didn't even open their 3ds. You challenge them to a battle or a trade, and they accept. The person hasn't moved an inch. And then you trade over Pokemon, and there's insert creepy Pokemon you want to have them send over, or insert Pokemon that were in their party party and their you know hex maniac trainer icon and all of that stuff. And then you get off the bus and you look back and they're gone or you know, insert cliche as you wish. And then through the whole game, there's like, you know, yada, yada, yada. You get what I mean. There's a hex maniac following you in the game, yada, yada, corrupted game file, Pokemon black, lost silver, et cetera, et cetera. But imagine the stories you can make with the, with the, um, the PC, uh, the PSS. Yeah. How do you like that story? That story That's started. Actually, That's definitely very interesting. Hell yeah, it is. It's fucking amazing. Use that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I need to get the uh, Samantha, what's her name on on uh, on the app to make us uh, creepy pasta about that. I have to agree. What what would what would she do? Like, say uh, you're like, oh god, my, I think my game's glitched, so you restart it. And then, like, imagine how fucked up your game file could be. And there's just, like, just, like, you know, insert um, your Alf, your Ruins of Alf and your um, Lavender Town music and everything. And every single trainer model is destroyed. And there's just a, there's just nothing in the game except this Hex Maniac and all this stuff. And insert your creepy Pokemon and all that. And then just, like... There's just like you know how in Five Nights Phrase there's the mini games where they spell out letters with like those odd grunts that mm-hmm. say help them save them yada yada yada. Yeah. Imagine if there was some kind of situation like that or with the unknown or anything that told you to get back on that same bus at the same time on the same day, and then you got on there and etc. Creepy stuff happened, and she was on there and she was the only one on there. And then the bus starts moving, and then she takes you to the underworld, and I don't know. I'm not good at finishing the story. I'm only good at the setup. This whole take you to the underworld thing, this hex maniac could easily be just some kind of dusk noir-esque style. Yeah, and it's just like how you imagine death looking because you're such a Pokemon nerd. Yeah. Uh, so... We could do. We could make creepy pasta if you can fill in the blanks. We could. What would you fill in one of the blanks with? Uh, I'm not sure yet. I would need to game see files and people on buses and people mm. in. <laughs> you want to know what it'd be? You get to the very end of the story and you get on the bus and you sit next to the person and then their their head would turn and they'd stare at you, and then it would end with just. Would you like to buy some moo milk? Don't ask where it came from. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to take a look at it. Definitely. All right. Um, we never talk about Pokemon killing each other. What's something on top of your head? Uh, Bushy acted like it was a popular thing, but I can't think of many Pokemon that kill each other. 
like ghost wise. Um, well, let's see what I can find. There's the mummy. There's the uh, um, Cofagrigus. Cofagrigus, yeah. I mean, that thing's pretty uh, Iron Maideny. Well, considering the fact that it actually eats people. Yeah. And oh my god, fucking Hoon Edge. If you want to see something that'll make you want, just look up Hone Edge Pokemon Adventures or Pokemon Special X and Y Shauna. Ugh. Let's not forget the stuff from the Electric Tail of Pikachu. At least I think it's the Electric Tail of Pikachu. Electric Tail Pikachu was the one that was pedophilic. Yeah, but let's not forget the point of the manga where in Koga's gym you've got vaporizing. Psyducks and Arbok. No, no, no. The, the Psyducks were zombies from Pokemon Tower, and there was an Arbok that was cut in half, returned, and later it was released, it was sent out, and it was fine. A Charmander chopped a Arbok in half, and a Hitmon Lee uh, crashed, crushed a uh, uh, an Onyx into, like, the balls fell apart and rolled down the hill. Hmm. But, no, I can't find anything about ghost Pokemon killing each other. I'm not sure where Bushy got that from. Yeah. Although we can definitely devote just a few minutes of rage of just Team Flare using Hone Edge, wrapping around Shauna's arm and making her swing her swing at people and it's on all the box art and it's just oh my god, no, please stop. This stuff isn't supposed to be in the public eye. I worry about our lovely public. <laughs> They're not prepared for that look in Shauna's dead eyes as she's swinging a sword at all of her friends. Just like the way it wraps around your arm, the way it wraps around her arm. Let's not forget the fact that she, um, an Aegis Lash is what's being used to control it. And an entire town? What? There's the spoiler that, like, the Aegis Lash is supposed to, and does, take control of an entire town of people. Why do you do this? Japan? Ah, but I'm, 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 I swear, like, you can make me read a million creepypastas. There's nothing scarier than the way that, that, uh, that Hone Edge wraps around Shauna's arm in that shot. Yeah. The the tightness of it and everything is just like a tingly kind of fear and creepy and creeped outness. Agreed. <sighs> Not Shauna. Precious sim roll too pure too pure for this corrupt evil creepy weirdly um so are we done here? I would say so. All right. Sweet dreams everybody. Sweet dreams.